Hello. You're muted, Julie. Do you need a co-host? I, I I answered your need for a co-host um, in case you get you drop. I went ahead and made you a co-host just now so okay. that if and so that you can be aware of the waiting room. Okay. Um it seems, I mean, I believe we have a smaller crowd today, and so I believe we got everybody okay. going in, but that way you can at least watch the waiting room. <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to see where I would see the waiting room. Is that under the participants, I guess? Where would I see people waiting to come in? A good question. Yeah, exactly. Anybody able to answer that question? Where I would see people if they're waiting in the waiting room? See, because it doesn't. Um, I'd like I can to say see. I know. <laughs> you you choose to know. So, do you choose to know, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to leave anybody in the waiting room. Um. Um. Actually, I I remember. I think it's in the initial settings, actually, because. Mm -hmm. Um. We're here on the side. Everybody I see is in because it popped up. See, it used to just pop up on the top of my screen and it did this time. But when we get more and more people, then it starts to come over to the side. And when I'm focused here, it's not over here. Yes. Yeah, I've noticed that also in in the class that uh, when we take classes that are bigger, that if you hit the chat, it'll move everything to the side. So is that what your experience, is that what you mean by that experience when there's like a ton of people or something? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes, it has the list over mm -hmm. in the side. Okay, I'm just gonna let my dogs back in the house. Awesome. Cashy, come on, come on boys. Come on. Come on. Let's see what happens is it stacks the chat underneath of it and then you can't see and then Everything is, um, once there get more people, it's not as visible. That's my experience. Good morning, Irene. She said, I got in. I got in today. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, I Googled where to see people in the Zoom waiting room, and it says, you can see who's in the waiting room on the participant screen. On the toolbar at the bottom of the Zoom window, click on participants. Okay. Another so screen what... on the right will pop up and it'll show everyone who's in the waiting room. An admit button will let them join when you are ready to bring them in. Yeah. So what Phyllis is so finding is waiting the... room feature, you must be a licensed user. Yeah, yeah. So, Julie, what Phyllis is finding is just when you tap on participants that it pops over on the side. So, and I believe we have a smaller group today. And so, I believe we'll be fine. Um, let me see. And that's what I see. That's what I see right now. So there we are. Because I know there's some other people that are going to receive the recording for this. And then there may be a few more that were um, hopping in. Give just a few more minutes and then we'll start to breathe and sync up. Checking my messages to see if somebody... So once I start, it's well, you get into your own flow, so you're not going to be yes, it's it's to, to it's I'm in my great state. So to go over here. And and I I believe I when I pause, I in between people I can check the chat. It's just a new thing for me to go check 
that side. I have my own meeting room. And when I use my own meeting room, then everybody gets in as Julie and Sandra are in class with me. They've experienced that. And when I link it to the human garage, it uses my, it uses the, there's a personal room and then there's another room inside of Zoom and it uses the other room. And so there's, I'm yet to know a way where I can just slide it to the other. I can say no waiting room, but then you all have to have a password to get it. And for me, that's more clunky because, yeah, the password. Then it's everybody's, what's the password? But, but I mean, here here's the one thing with the password. Um, with the Zoom link, the password is already in there. Is it always? Because I've had an experience where you've had to type it in depending on where you are. I Well, I've never had any issue using a Zoom link. Um, mm -hmm. and the password's already in there because I, I do other zoom calls. Mm -hmm. It's one I don't have like, cause in zoom, you can go in and see, um, you can pull down the meeting ID for mm -hmm. various meetings, yes. but then you have to enter the password. But if you have the link, the password's already embedded in it. Okay. That's my experience. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started because I know there's some more people, but I believe there's some people that are receiving the recordings and that's part of their RSVP. And so there we are. So, okay. First thing, everybody take a big breath. Everybody take a big inhale, inhale big and exhale all the way out. Let's sync up. So right arm underneath of your left, your left arm on top. Twisting to the right and looking to the left. Just take your big breath through your mouth. Inhale big and exhale. And again, inhale and exhale. Again and exhale. Now through your nose, inhale and exhale. And again, through your nose and exhale. And one more and exhale big. And go ahead and come back to center. Awesome. I see we have one in the waiting room. Um, now how to let them in. This is interesting. So easy when there was no chat. <laughs> I got it. I did get it. <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> it's like, okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for hopping in and joining us today. Um, some of you I've seen before, and then some of you I haven't. And then Irene, all I can see is the top of your cute little hair. That's about all I can see of Irene. There she is. There she is. Okay. So the one thing I'm going to ask is if there's a way for you to be still, it'd be very helpful if you could be still because we're going to, yes, Stacy, Stacy's doing all the things this morning. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that, little this. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I have a little something. I need to run to the bathroom. I have to go so bad. Suddenly you have no idea. Oh yeah. Can I'm I sure you do. That? That's called fight or flight. And it's coming I'm, out of my butt though it's not the front part okay. go run and care for yourself don't run cancel run no it's go care I'm for yourself walk. i'll be back momentarily yes, yes. she has something running y'all just so y'all know ah, no pun <laughs> intended <laughs> it's true it's body language we're gonna go ahead and talk and julie will jump in and when she returns there's no reason to wait for her she'll be fine so because that is the truth. Body language. This is what I love about body language is you can hide absolutely nothing. Nothing can be hidden because your language, your body language is going to tell exactly what is going on. 
we're really, really good thinkers, really good. And yet sometimes we'll be thinking, thinking, thinking as not the truth of who we are. Our thoughts are not the truth of who we are. It's not what's really acting for us. It's not what our heart believes. And it's not what our subconscious is playing. So we speak into body language because it tells us exactly what's going on. Because there's things that we are yet to really fully understand. So I have met some of you and some of you I have not. Legacy, is there a way we'd be able to see you? If so, please share your face. But we, um, my name is Carrie Mushaw, and I have been in the in the human garage only for a few months, and loving my experiences. I have spent time in myofascial tissue release and the belief that our tissue stores the issues, which is our trunk, and. Playing with that, I actually played with um, John Barnes training in unwinding. So I do understand the power of unwinding. And I've had that experience once I jumped into the human garage, I realized this is an unwinding and how powerful, in fact, the unwinding is. In all of it, one of the things you hear Gary say is he'll say things about the meaning behind this or for example, when he does organ reset, he'll speak about organs and kidneys and resentment and forgiveness, and he'll say things about forgiveness. And I'm aware that there's so many of the maneuvers that I've seen so far, and there is body language in all of them. I'm aware of why his hand is in one spot, what that means. And so I have a great understanding of exactly what he's saying, because I was trained in body language and conscious language. Um, I am, I was trained with the understanding from Robert Tennyson Stevens. So he wrote a book called Conscious, Conscious Language. And it's an amazing, it's an amazing book. It, it was a book written like in the seventies. So it's very uh, black and white, just black and white. And so then he came out with My Word Made Flesh, which is a colorful spiral. It's an expensive book. It's a fabulous book. So it has all, all the body language and everything in it. But my coach was trained through him. And then she began her own training. Faith and wellness is where I was trained in Waller, Texas at an organic farm. And my experience was walking myself once I began to understand body language and language patterns. Because the words that we repeat, that's what I'm going to ask you. Because around your body language, that tells me one thing, but the real, the real, real, real clues are what you're saying about it. What are you telling yourself about it? What do you believe about how you feel? And that keeps your subconscious playing it over and over. Once I understood that for myself, I have had seizures for 30 through two years in the past. And I'm now three years seizure and medication free. Because once I began to understand, I was able to translate and be supported on walking through, changing all of my thought forms. And when I changed my language, what ended up happening is that I created a new neural pathway in my brain. So it created a completely new pattern. So then I was able to stay and I didn't require having my seizures as a way to leave. My seizures were a way that my body manifested leaving because I felt life was hard, was stressful, and I was overwhelmed. If you ever, um, I'll share my website and you can see my actual video where I speak about my full testimonial and I actually took on a lot of my mother's feelings as if they were my own. And that was part of my overwhelmingness was believing in mom's feelings as my own feelings. And it took me out. I mean, I just manifested it, it took me out. And seizures for me required 24 hours of sleep the next day. So that's a long time. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense to us, like logically. You're like, I remember the first time I told my husband, he goes, so you've been seizing so you could rest? And I was like, not on purpose. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's my subconscious that was like, we've got to get out of here. So it's not every person that sees doesn't have this pattern. We find different ways to take ourselves out. 
we find different ways to leave if we are having trouble staying. And so we'll find different things in patterns because since then I've really drawn and I can find different ways. Oh, look, there's a way that you, you were leaving too. Oh, now I can stay. I find different things. Like I used to sit in front of the TV when I had a day off for hours on end, hours on end. And I was like, all of a sudden I was like, wait a second, what are you doing? You're just trying to check out. I was like, oh, I got it. Okay, now I stay. And so fine tuning all of it, it still keeps coming. It's We call it a movement. The reason I don't call it a process is because a process sounds so lingering and, and sounds like when I get down there. A movement means I'm in it and it's happening now. And when I get further down the road, I'm just going to have greater glory. I still have glory right now. And that's the difference in process and movement. That's why people are like, I'm in a process. And I'm like, oh, or you could be in a movement where you're actually making something happen. And so those are just some words and just some of the ways that we use them that you can you can already hear the differences that come on. So one of the things today, I've done some of these calls and shared my experiences and been able to hop in and coach people and people have had great responses. My question though today, one of the things that I'm gonna bring up today actually is something that I hear a lot about. So we're gonna talk a few things about that first. So I hear a whole lot about high blood pressure, a whole lot about high blood pressure. Y'all, that's called hypertension. Did you hear the words hypertension? Do you hear the word hypertension? If you have a child and it's hyper, you totally understand what that is. If you have a dog and it's hyper, you totally understand what that is. And yet you're not real sure what's going on with yourself. And hyper is not being able to stay still, not being able to stay still, has to keep moving. If you think about a child that's hyper, you're like, you may have, I've had experiences where I wanted to grab a child and go ground, put your feet in the ground, stay still. Like stay, 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 stay. And they're like, well, that's your thoughts. Those are the thoughts of somebody who's hyper, who has hypertension is their thoughts are moving like this as rapidly as they can from a ping pong table, from one end to the other, as fast as they can. And what does it cause? It causes tension. It causes tension. So how do we move from that? Well, the real question, um, is do you feel you have to feel compulsion? Do you believe that you have to feel compulsion? Because I've had experiences where I have coached people. I have a great friend of mine. She is a massively successful interior design person for the stars, massively successful. And I use GABA. I don't know if anybody's familiar, but GABA is a very natural, and I have a certain brand, Pharma GABA, that I use that it, you chew it. And it it is the chemical that goes off in your brains that helps to reduce stress because we live in fight or flight that's what's happened is you go into fight or flight it was set fight or flight was set into motion created only so that when the car drives down the road and you're walking you move out of the way what happens is people live in fight or flight they live it and my friend said to me well i gave her a gaba and she was so chilled out and calm her her friends were i mean her kids were like Oh my God, that's a wonderful, give her, she should always take that. And she looked at me and she said, if I was this calm, I wouldn't get any work done. I closed my business. We wouldn't have any money. I said, wow, that's a big belief right there. She said, it's the truth. I said, okay. She stood in it. That was for her. Well, what I'm saying is there's many people that believe that. We believe, and we may be unconsciously believing like, how will I get anything done if I don't have all these thoughts going in my head? 
I mean, this is how I do things. This is the way it's been in my life. This is the way my parents did it. This is all I know. And that's okay that that's all you know. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. I'll show you Pharmagaba later because I remind me. Um, but it doesn't have to be this way. We believe it has to be this way, but the truth is we can choose how it's going to be. We can write our own story. That's what I love. I remember the time that my coach said to me, say, I author my own life. And I was like, I author my own life. I was so excited because that meant that I could create my own life. The people that had gone before me had paved many ways and taught me many things, but it didn't mean that their life had to be my life. But that's what was happening because my mother, I mean, I don't have hypertension, but um, my mother did. So I could go on that whole thing. I love this. One. Well, I'm genetically disposed, so I'm probably going to get it. I mean, I could go there, but um, that's a belief too. And we just, we can shift it. I can see what my mom did before I even, I mean, that's the first time I've even said that out loud because it's the first time I was really remembering that she had that because the pattern I saw was mom was plowing through life. My mom was going as fast as she could, 90 to nothing. She would sit on the couch and she would rest for five minutes. She'd go, I'm gonna rest my head for five minutes. She'd hop up and she'd start again. And my mother ended up that she died suddenly with a staph infection. And her spine crumbled when they did an autopsy, like fell apart in their hands. They were like, they, they came to me and they were like, we don't know what this is. We don't know what this is. She has no open wounds, but we can't, her spine just dissipated. Her spine is about support. My mother did not believe she had support. How do you support someone that's plowing through life and doing everything themselves? It's not possible. There's no opening. She wasn't of the receiving and she was pretty pissed off about it. She just didn't have the tools to do it. And so what I get from that is how much I can be of the receiving and how much I can slow down and I can rewrite this entire story. And I am, I'm doing it. In these past few weeks, I've had a whole nother level of ease because instead of pushing through life, we can choose ease, but we will require to stay because if you are having hypertension, you have compulsion. If I take a picture of your eye, I can tell you in your iris that there's going to be white lines that are going like this. They're waves. They go all the way around. That's how mine was. And as I started working, they started straightening out and spacing out. And you can see more blue in my eye now. Compulsion is real. You require asking yourself what all you're doing compulsively. If you're sitting there and you have a minute, all of a sudden you pick up your phone, you start scrolling. What's everybody doing? What's everybody doing? What's everybody doing? It's compulsion. And it causes, it, it, you require reminding yourself that I stay. Like I stay. I stay is a great decree. Repeating a decree is a spiritual law. When we repeat something over and over and over again, it reprograms your subconscious mind. And so decrees are great. This is what we use, what I use in my coaching. So if you say to yourself, I stay, I lovingly stay. I give myself permission to stay. One of the reasons people often leave going crazy is because they've had some experience of love leaving. Anybody had an experience of love leaving? Anybody? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's our definition of leave. Okay, we can say my mother ascended, and in the past, I would have told you she left me here. Ding, confirmation. There you go. Firm belief. That was my belief. She left me here. I'm an only child. Now, what do I do? In the past, that's exactly the story I would tell people. The fact is, is that I'm 50% my mom, 50% my dad. She's not going anywhere, she's right here. So I, you, we can have these beliefs that love leaves and then we are compulsively trying to hold on to stuff, running and running. So 
my love stays is ever powerful too in being able to stay. My love stays. Because there is nothing that leaves unless we believe it leaves. Because everything, people come in our lives, I love this part because people come into our lives for a reason. They come in, they go through, and they go on. And we're often like, dang, man, I really like them. Why'd they have to go? They already gave you your message. You got your message. You had your time. You enjoyed it. It was great. It's amazing. And what they left with you was so many great things. Even if you feel the relationship sucked, there was something that you got from it. And so that's where we're coming into a new understanding. So what our body begins to tell us is because the compulsiveness, I can usually tell because somebody's bouncing a lot or they're moving their leg uh -huh. or they're checking the whites that they're checking their iris of their eye in the middle of the call, Sandra. And so, oh, but I'm doing something conscious. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> it's the same thing. So it's the same thing. I tell people that you can go meditate for four hours a day and you can use meditation as a way to take you out. And meditation is a great thing. We can take anything and we can sh make it into something else. It's up to us to remember our great state and be aware because that's why, like, I'll tell people, that's why I ask everybody to stay still. I ask you to lock on, like you lock on because when you lock on, you have the experience of exactly what I'm saying. You hear it all the way in you. When you unmic yourself and you, you jump in the middle of something I'm saying to go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, would you do, you just left your body. If you unmike to speak because we're, we're coaching you, that's a totally different thing. But if you'll notice on calls, people will be like, oh, hey, let me tell you about this. And just to share something. And I'm listen, I'm all about the share. But if you're sharing because you want to help somebody else and leaving your body, you've left the moment. You've left the experience and what's being said because whatever information that you relayed could have been relayed in an hour, could have been relayed tomorrow, it didn't have to happen right then and right there. That's the thing. And when we believe it, because we're just so used to saying something the minute we have it, because, oh, we could forget it. Now we line it with another member. Now we line it with something else. Oh my gosh, I have to leave because I could forget. We can always remember. We remember anything we require memory. But I flushed the word forget a long time ago. And I just say, I just remembered, or I remember, or I choose to remember. Because we will remember anything we require remembering. All we have to do is say, I remember. If it doesn't come to you right then, how important is it? Oh my God, I gotta know. What was the name of that song I was gonna tell her about? Really? Because that's gonna change her life. Let me tell you. <laughs> The universe is massively rejoicing because you remember the song. What? There's no birds singing over that. The universe is massively rejoicing because you're following your conscious life. You're tuned into your body and you know how you feel. That's a rejoicing moment. That's where we are. So, awesome. Let's go ahead. And so I've spoken to the nice hypertension and being able to stay. And the other thing about uh, the hypertension is it's trusting you can stay and it's trusting love because if we're running all over, like I said, it, we have often have a belief that love leaves. And so in retraining that you re require trusting love. So I trust my love. I trust my love. We always have the word my in front of it. If you say, I trust the love, it's going to bounce right off of you. Because 
my love. I'm not asking you to go trust Billy's love because Billy's love is not going to touch you until you trust your own love. So this is not about anybody else. It's only about you. Only about you. The other thing I choose to share before we before I open this up is that the other part that I've had, because um, I have a class right now that's in session, Julie and Sandra are in my class. When any time that I create a class, even if it's two weeks, once you say yes to the class, the movement begins. The movement begins. You start having experiences. Things start happening. Awarenesses come up. Things start shifting. Julie texted me about a headache. I'm like, okay, this there, this, this is not a coincidence. And this is what Julie says to me. Everybody I know has a headache. I said, well, of course they do. They're part of your pattern. You sign them up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you sign those people up. People, we've heard of mirrors. We've heard of mirrors before. This is exactly what this is. Um, we call them your thought forms. You can call them mirrors, but people are going to show up in your exact same patterns. Not so you can go, not so you can go help them. Not so you can go do anything for them so that you can be aware of it in you. So when you see something acting on the outside, you're like, God, man, why are all these people? Why does everybody have a headache? Why does everybody have a headache? Then you have to turn and you ask yourself. What is going on with me? And the first thing you're going to ask yourself is how you feel. Julie, do you choose to speak into this? Yes, I choose to speak into this. Okay. <laughs> so tell me how your head feels. Pressure in the back of my head. Pressure. Pressure. Where in the back of your head? Uh, cranial base, where neck meets head. Right here? Yeah. I call it the blood pressure zone. Yeah. Uh -huh. That is fight or flight. And pressure. And so, have you felt pressure about doing things oh yes tons okay i have so oh. many things on my plate right now that i'd like to get done and i'm not sure which direction to focus i'm sending this recording to marlene too i have so many things on my plate mm -hmm. i have so many things on my plate and i don't know where to focus and where did you learn to do, put a lot of things on your plate? Who taught you oh, that? I saw my mom running around like a chicken with no head. <laughs> that was and, my as a, and as a child in the house with that going on, how did that feel for you? Um, Like I was the grounding rod. She always turned to me. It was, it was overwhelming for me. It was quite overwhelming. So have you kept the have you kept the feeling of overwhelming alive? Uh yes, very much so. I can feel it in my gut as well, right in my solar plexus. Okay, so in your gut, your gut is about will. Mm -hmm. Will and transformation. It takes great will to do something completely differently. Great will. Because overwhelmed is fear what are you scared of julie letting people down what happens if you let people down and letting people down what happens if you let some people down I don't know, because I, I work my damnedest not to let that happen. Did your mom let you down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and how did that feel? Overwhelming. Okay, you're going to have to be more specific, because now you're over um, using overwhelming. <laughs> over, um, draining. Um. 
I think I, I just thought the word just came sickening, sickening. I, I felt almost, almost, although I loved her deep, deeply, I almost cringed at times, like cringeworthy. Did it hurt? Did it, sorry? Did it did, hurt? Did it hurt? Oh, did it you say cringe? Yeah, it hurt. I, yeah, it hurt. Like your head? Um, I'm getting low back when, when I said, and it hurt, because I've had low back pain, um, off and on through my, through my life, starting as a teenager, late teenage, teenage years. And in your I'm lower also back. feeling my head coming up more now. It feels like as we're speaking, my whole head is starting to become more aware of tension. Awesome. Awesome. And your lower back, because did you heard me sp speak about support and do you allow others to support you? Yes okay. or no? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, a, li a, li a little, sometimes like on Monday, I schedule it between the hours of two and three. I was going to say not enough, but it's probably no. Well, in, in your lower back is about flexibility in support because listen, we can ask people to support us you support me with loading the dishwasher. They load it. You turn around, you go behind them, you reload it. Do you really, are you really receiving support at that moment? No, because if we judge support, are we, oh, it's got to be this way, or I don't know if I can let them do that because, you know, they might not put the right ingredients in the mixture, whatever it is, because lower back has to do with flexibility. And because you was your mom very flexible in, in people supporting her? Absolutely not. No. So I'm going to ask you to stay with your yeses and your noes because here's no. the thing about okay. strong no for mom. Yeah, because the absolutely here's the thing is people sometimes people will say absolutely and they just and absolutely yes or absolutely no. It it, it is something that gets in the way of your direct expression. Also, your direct expression is yes or no, and when we put anything in front of it. We are getting something out of the way of direct expression. Direct expression is clear communication, clear processing, clear awareness, clear transformation. So that's why we enjoy that part. So yeah, so if mom, if she didn't allow people to support her, well, that that creates a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. But because you didn't like being let down. So did you learn at an early age, I'm not going to let anybody down because I don't like the way this feels? Yes. Yes. And awesome. And we got your dog in confirmation in the background. Yes. The, the doorbell just rang. <laughs> so <laughs> Another confirmation. Awesome. We've got two confirmations going on. Um, we've got the doorbell. Ding dong. That's it. That's it. She's got it. Okay. And so, and, Julie, stay right here. They're going to be totally fine. They're part of this whole thing. They are telling us you're on to something. <laughs> so thank you. Because here's the deal is if you learned when you were young that letting go down felt yucky, felt sickening, made you cringe, then you immediately decided you were never going to do that. So did you step in and decide you were going to control everything? Yes. How's that working? Oh, it's painful. It, it, it's too much. It's painful. It's nauseating. It's headache creating. Yes. It's, it's exhausting. Yes, because yesterday I said to her, you want to hop on a call? You can move all that. I mean, she can move her headache. Nope. She's going to take care of all of her clients. <laughs> I said, ah, oh, putting yourself in the back, are you? I said, you really? I'm like, I'm typing this. Like, is she really? I mean, because I want to type that to my coach. I was like, she really typing this to me. I was like, okay, here we go. Because the thing is, is, and awesome, you made it get really big, which you don't have to in the future. Now you know. But if you learn that early on, is it time for you to fully receive support? Yes. I'm feeling nauseated right now, like you won't believe. Awesome. awesome. Because that, that burping, that's grief. That's grief coming up. Because... Did you have sadness about the way mom lived her life? 
Oh, very much. Yes, yes. And so when we have that kind of sadness, it's awesome. You're moving it. It creates space for a new choice. But your headache is a memory. Say this is only a memory. This is only a memory. Say it again. This is only a memory. Say it again. This is only a memory. This is only a memory. You don't have to live it. You are creating it, though. Right now, you're going into mom's stuff, but it's not for you. It's not for you, but it'll require you being willing to fully receive support. And I mean, that means drop everything. I mean, I've canceled all clients and everything in one day and just said, hey, 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 it's time for me to care for me. But this is how you go first, because I happen to know you're in the health industry and do you try to are you teaching people to take care of themselves first that's why i've dropped table work because i'm so for that now answer the question yes yes yes, yes. so <laughs> because yes because if you're there and you're telling people you got to put yourself first you gotta put yourself first but i'm gonna put you in front of me that way i'm gonna show you how important you are now -uh. all you're telling all you're teaching them is that things go before me, things go before me, things go before me. Their, their subconscious gets that. You're like, well, I didn't tell them that I had a head. They know. They know. So it's for you to be willing to let go and allow support. Say, I willingly receive all of my support. I willingly receive all of my support. Say, I stay and I care for me. I stay and I care for me. You require carrying your mother's pattern on any longer. No. No. And say, thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. Yeah. Because she laid it on the altar for you to see it. The only reason you have all this clarity, you saw it so well, you knew it so well, she laid it down. You're here to pick it up, but you'll have to do it. So are you willing to go first? Yes. Awesome. Say, I fully receive all of my support. I fully receive all of my support. What feelings are coming up for you in your body right now? Um, since it's more like sensation, um, belly is kind of like feeling almost like it's bloating out, distending. There's like a distension happening around my solar plexus. Um, and I'm a bit jittery um around my chest i'm feeling a bit jittery around kind of above my chest and in, into just lower than my heart awesome that's you're moving energy i don't know if you've ever moved a lot of energy before i moved a lot of energy and i i get like where i'm like i feel shaky and yet i'm aware this is me moving energy this yes. is me moving energy there's a lot of energy moving there's a lot of energy moving because that's no small pattern. Yes yeah. or no? Awesome, <laughs> yeah. look at that. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, awesome. Stay with it. Say, I remember my ease in feeling my support. I remember my, what was that word? Sorry. Ease. I remember ease. my ease in feeling my support. <laughs> Say it again. I remember my ease in feeling my support. <laughs> That's Will. That cough. 
is breaking stuff up. It's moving. I don't hold it in. Let it go. There you go. Feels like it's coming out of my heart. And that's that rock you've been putting there. If you're not allowing people to support you, how are you allowing them to love you? We judge how people support us. The small thing of the dishwasher. That's a real thing. That's a real thing for me. That was a real thing for me. When I first started allowing support to come in, my husband came home one day. He said to me, my beloved, he says, I'm cooking dinner. And he says, you want me to do something in the utility room? You want me to do the laundry or something? I'm like, what happened? Like, what happened? I just opened the doors for support within me. I just kept decreeing. And all of a sudden he comes home one day and he's in there. And I said, yes. And I knew I got it. I was like, I'm doing it. It's happening. And then I go walk into the utility room behind him. And I'm like, oh, did you get that? And did you do? And he, he turned around, he looked at me and he said, are you allowing me to support you? And I went, oh, those, is that his language? No, but he said it. So I coached myself through him. He said it. And I said, no, nope. I recommit. And I went right back into the other room. I started cooking because that's exactly right. When we open the doorways to support, we'll allow people to show up and support us. It's the willingness that we require it and, and, and it feels very loving. So you, they are the same. They are the same. Because many things that you've done in your life, you've done for others because it feels loving. The thing is, is you left yourself behind. There's balance, but when you close the door to receiving because you're just going to get love this way, you're not receiving. So we require receiving, and that's how you open the door. Thank you, Drew. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, last night in our GTA Fashion Movers group, anybody in the Toronto area, please come and join us. Teresa is part of the group as well, and it's, it's wonderful. Um, one of the women... Um, saw that I had a headache at the beginning and she rubbed my shoulders. My, I would love to reframe my thinking about that afterwards because I felt like I needed to give her something back in return. So to rewire that feeling like I need to give instantaneous exchange, this might be helpful for the rest of the group as well. <laughs> yes, but here's the thing. I, here's how I... so. I have, a, when I'm sitting in a group, when we do a group, I don't allow anybody to touch anybody unless they want to put their foot on somebody's foot to stay. That's my belief because what happens is we start believing they're the person that can remove our headache. Yeah. That's my, that's when I practice consciousness and we're in a circle. I don't allow anybody to touch anybody because only your foot on your foot to say, I'm supporting you and stay because we have the power within us to move things. And if we, and that, and this is what Gary is teaching. He's telling you, you can do it. You can do it. This is what he's telling you. He's not saying everybody go touch everybody. And so it, it's how we've done it. We've, how we've done it, which is why you walked away from table work, but it's the same thing in a sitting in a room. And so that's the first thing I would say there, because that creates great codependence. And then at that moment, then you've got to get back to her. And she's got to get back to you. You go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. <laughs> it's this, it's like the two little skunks. Does anybody remember that cartoon on the Looney Tunes? You go first. Oh, no, 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 you. Oh, then nobody ever gets through the door. I'm like, okay, that's what we're doing. Instead of, because... Someone knows you're grateful without you requiring saying it every time. But I'm a real big thing about that touching part, though, to begin with, because that's my my part. And um, because did you feel guilty you didn't give her something? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. Okay. Yes, because oh. and that's and is that true? I mean, did you, because let me ask you this, if you support someone else, do you feel you got something from that? Yes. Okay. 
then that's, then you've already got, there's your answer because I'm already getting something right now. And this is glorious for me. My body's heating up right now. This is massive will coming on board for me. When I get heated up, it's will. And I'm like, yeah, baby, lock in. I'm here. So there you go. There's your answer. Thank you. Okay. Who chooses to share some something they have going on? May I just ask a question? Yes. Um, when you're talking about um, being still and sitting still, <clears throat> um, like I've had many, many injuries, many accidents, and I've been in pain for most of my adult life. So for me to try so far and, and I'm, and I'm so much far. better. Pardon? So far. Yeah. So, so, so far. No, 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 no. Um, Don't gloss over that. Sandra what you've had so much pain in your life so far so far okay. yes going. it it is it is greatly re reduced with the fashion maneuvers and all that I've done since I took early retirement um for me to just sit still in one spot can cause increase of pain like if I don't kind of relieve my body from being in one spot, then, then, um, then I can feel more discomfort. So perhaps that is just a belief that if I don't move, that it's going to be, there's going to be more pain. And how do I, how do I alleviate that belief? <laughs> oh, it, I mean, do you have a big belief in pain? That's a yes. Look, she's puckering her lips. She doesn't want to say it. Mm, I'm not going to say it. We're not going to Okay, okay. So, so, okay. so, yes, because wait, it's been minute. part just of my... Wait. Just wait, just wait, just wait. One moment, one moment. Because here's the thing is, if you really believe in pain, then you're going to keep it going. Because here's what I will experience in my body. So I'll experience things in my body. Um, like I'll do the, I, the fascial maneuver. I have done fascial maneuvers in my whole back. I shared, I just shared the story about my mother. There has been so much back realignment for me and that's a DNA pattern. I'm fully aware when I feel it the next day and it's, you know, and some people would say it's pain, it hurts. And I'm like, it is so tender. And I'm like, it's realigning. I am realigning. I am realigning what, what, what is once believed by my family. I have walked through my decrees. I have, you've heard me tell me just a story about support. My body is now coming back in. And so it's how you're going to speak about it. And if you're going to continue to believe in pain, 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 you will keep pain alive. And somebody that's had as much pain, you're here for great pleasure. You're here to be masterful at pleasure. When I tell people and I speak about staying, doesn't mean sit on your couch and sit down and stay in your sit there the whole day. You can go walk. You can go do lots of things. It's when you leave your body to do it. You can walk and be fully present. You can be, you can sit and have tea with your friends and be fully present. But if you got to check your phone, you just jumped out and left. If you have to go, if you're driving down the street and the two of you are driving, y'all are having a serious conversation and all of a sudden you go squirrel. Well, you just left. But but did you see that car? That was the coolest thing. You just left. You just left the conversation. You just left. So that's what I'm talking about with staying. But how will you do it? You will do it if you will, Sandra, when you repeat your decrees. I stay. I lovingly stay. I give myself permission to fully stay. You repeat it and you repeat it. The beautiful part about reprogramming your subconscious is you don't have to try. It's not, what do I do? Do I go? Do I stay? Do I wait? Do I do? You just know because you've created a new pattern. The other one starts to dissipate. It's like lifting a weight. Five pounds. Oh man, that's really heavy at first. Well, all of a sudden it's super easy. Hmm. Okay. That's what happens. And so just like the story that I said about my husband, I didn't go tell him, listen, I've been working on the support thing. So you better jump on it. Okay. 
I mean, I didn't do anything like that. I was saying it over and over again. And then boom, stuff started changing around me. It doesn't make sense to the conscious mind. You're like, I can't control them. I have no control over those people. They're just acting like clowns. Okay. Or they're all your mirrors. You take their patterns, you do it in you and boom, things start changing. People show up differently in our lives because you have an opening for it. I have an opening to receive support. So people will show up being willing to support me. In the past, I believed I had to do it all myself. So nobody showed up. I'd be like, damn it, I'm in here in the kitchen. I'm doing it again. I'm doing all this myself. There was no opening. They were like, yeah, she does it all herself. Check her out. She does it all herself. They're like, you do it all yourself. Check you out. Check you out. And you're like, mm, we're doing it all myself. I'm like, I mean, that was my life. I mean, and yet in my mother's life, but the mm -hmm. moment I had an opening, they just showed up. I'm telling you, it's just very different. So yes, walk. Yes, move. But if you notice yourself, like if I was just clicking my pen, click, 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 click. The whole time I was talking, I did that in my, one of my trainings. My coach looked at me and she goes, are you staying? I'm like, yes, I'm right here. I'm locked on. Click, 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 click. And she's like, how are you fully focused while you're clicking? I'm like, because I am. She goes, really? Because your thumb is your will and you're just dissipating your will the time you're doing it. And I was like, okay, got it. Because I could sit there and argue with her or I could try it out and see what happens and boom. Because be aware of like jittery legs and things like that, where we have to do things. That's a different thing where you tell yourself it's okay. And you just pat yourself. It's okay. And for you, massive security and stay. Because guys, we have to be really secure to be able to stay. Because growing up in, in a house, Julie, where people are, where your mother's running around, staying still, I imagine, didn't feel very comfortable. So and it didn't feel secure. When people are all running around you in circles, you don't feel secure at all. You're like, I don't know what's going to happen next in your whole bodies. So we bring security on board. Notice I use the word security instead of safety. Safety is what you did when you had safety patrols in school. You have safety regulations. Those are all things to keep you from being hurt. Security is the massive feeling of feeling secure. There's a difference. It's a reason that I use the word security. So Sandra, to be able to say, I remember I am secure in my stay. Say it. I I don't don't yeah. write it down. Just say it. <laughs> you busted. Uh, <laughs> I remember I am secure in my ability to stay. So I say, I remember I am secure in my stay. I remember I am secure in my stay. I am my secure home in me. I am my secure home in me. Say that again. I am my secure home in me. Say it again. Eyes open. I am secure. No. <laughs> it's okay. See, that's how fast she took herself out. Oh yeah, I got to talk about my eyes. Everybody pay attention. That's how fast. And it's okay. Just, I am my secure home in me. I am my secure home in me. Say it again. I am my secure home in me. I am my secure home in me. How do you feel when you say that? Secure. Like, not, I, um, it's that feeling of security that feels good. And I liked it. Awesome. Awesome. So start using different descriptors in your words, in your, in your body language, because if we are in the movement, especially if you're doing fascial maneuvers, 
what you were doing is you are returning to your body where you have once left yourself behind. You are returning where you once had a pain. You're coming back in. And so one of the um, one of the things that I've actually, so one of the fascial maneuvers that, that the antler where we have this and we come here, okay, this is choice. Your temples are choice. And so when you do that, everybody, let's do this. We're all going to do it together. Everybody do it. If you have your hands, you're not driving. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do that antler. So your left, your left hand, your fingers are forward, your right hand, your fingers are back, pressing in and then coming up. So both of your antlers are at the top, resting your hands on your head. Take a big breath, inhale big through your nose and exhale. And again, inhale big and exhale. I willingly choose. I willingly choose. And another breath. Inhale big. Do a turn to the left. Stay right here and say, I willingly receive all my choices. I willingly receive all my choices. Breathe through your mouth, inhale, and exhale. Come back to the center. Twist to the right through your mouth, inhale big, and exhale through your mouth. Come back to center. Inhale big through your mouth, and exhale through your mouth. Say, I choose. I choose. And then bring your hands down. Did anybody heat up? Anybody get heat? If you got heat, raise your hand. Anybody get heat? Heat, heat, yep. Yes. That's the will. That's your will. So will is our heating up. So if we can apply some decrees into some of your movements, you're going to find great new awareness because this is where we have choice. And so bringing choice in is going to be ever so powerful because one of the things we believe we're stuck here, we're stuck in this body, we're stuck in this time. Like I have to do things this way. This is all I know. That's a belief that there's no choice. Like I had all these accidents. I'm stuck in this pain. This is where I am. I'm making great movement. I'm moving forward, but I'm I'm still in this pain. I still have pain. I mean, and so you're still keeping some of that alive. And what I can hear is some, like, I don't have a choice. Like I have to move a little bit, Carrie. I have no choice. And you can move. Absolutely, you can move. Find a way to move when you're still aware of how you feel. When we come into our heads and we're thinking all the time, we've left our heart. This is the place where we have our feelings. This is where you where you come into feeling. I mean, to ask Julie how she felt, we had to, we got through sickness and did, we got through a lot of descriptors before we got into all of a sudden she's burping and there's sadness. But it will require being able to label how you feel discover how you feel, give it all the words, and then discover how, how the words, if you're willing to touch your words with love, then you can find a more loving way to be with your body. Because especially if you're giving yourself fascial maneuvers, you are releasing, you're shifting, you're transforming. So in voting your own victory, you claim that by saying, oh, this is tender because I'm realigning, I'm realigning my love in me. When you feel muscles and muscles are tender, they're power. So when I doing all the squats that Gary has us doing and turning and twisting, 
And I'll wake up sometimes. I'm like, Ooh, my legs are very tender. I'm like, awesome. I have power returning. I have power returning. And so I'm, a, I speak into the return. We have spent so much time speaking into where we fit that now we're, you're, you're all here because you're on the human garage. You're all giving yourself something new and different. You may be in the beginning stages. You may be much further down the road, but the fact is you are transforming. So if you keep speaking about where you've been without saying in the past, you will bring that forward with you. If you still identify new sensations in your body as, oh my gosh, I recognize this, this is pain. You're going to stay there. You can identify it. So you can say, oh my gosh, I recognize this. I felt this pain before. Oh, okay. I remember now. And now I know that it's only my pleasure returning. Now I know it's only my pressure returning because I'm not, there's a, we don't require stuffing it down. Like that pain don't exist. That pain don't exist. We're just identifying it with love. Oh, I see you, your pain. And I believed in you for a long time. And now I know it's something else that you may have memories that come up with it. And that's where I'm saying, and it's okay to remember where you remember this for Julie was remembering that time back in the house. But being able to remember and lovingly look at that and say, that's, thanks for showing me. And now I choose ease. Now I move forward with ease. I feel my support and I remember my ease. So being able to come back in, in a different way requires we reframe it. We speak about things very differently. Every word you say is going to give it power. So find what kind of power you're going to give what your body is telling you. Now you may give it something and you may be like, oh my gosh, it's not working. Send me a message because there's something else in there. That's why I do these calls. There's something else in there. Somebody else choose to jump in? Have anything you desire to be translated? Oh, no one has anything. Yeah, I do. Okay. Actually. Hi, good morning. How are you? Hey. Hi, Maria. How are you? I'm good. Um, um, so I, uh, uh, in the past, uh, I've been challenged with, um, ulcerative colitis. Okay. So I don't speak into disease because, so tell me your, are you having symptoms right now? Uh, no, but, okay. um, what I find is, um, I get a lot of activity and, uh, feeling in my I guess like underneath my left side of my stomach and my and my small intestine mm -hmm. and uh in the past what i or yeah in the past what i've done is is i've just put uh, i've done um the, the organ reset on that side mm -hmm. but i'm wondering if there's something else that i could be telling myself so when it comes up for you and you have that feeling on the left side how does it feel Give me the descriptives. Like I have to poo. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, it, yeah, it's just, it just feels like hard. Like a okay. cramp. Hard and cramp. And has it been hard for you to take in how you feel? Yeah. Remember your yeses and your noes. In the past, it has been hard. Is that what you mean by remembering my yeses and my noes? Yeah, yeah, because you said yeah. And I'm just, oh. with the yeah, here's the thing. A yeah is non-committal. And it's a gray line. And your subconscious works like a computer. So it doesn't understand that. It's like, yeah, where are we? So, because feeling like you have to poop is um and you said that it gets it's hard and that it cramps and our stomach is about taking in how we feel and being able to receive because also your stomach is we all know it's nutrition and take which it's about receiving and so if it's been hard for you i hear you're saying in the past because you heard me say in the past that's, that's awesome but if it's coming up for you right now 
it's in the right now. I mean, if you did you reset your stomach yesterday? No. Today? Not yet. Not yet. There, see, she already knows it's gonna happen. So if you have a not yet, that means that you're it's something that you're doing frequently. So it shows up frequently. So it's still, I appreciate the, but let's get down the road and then you can put it in the past. But being able to, it's so, because right now it's hard or it cramps. And so it's about taking in how you feel. It's about receiving how you feel. And if it's been hard to do that, because often if we've had different things, like you brought up earlier, some things that you've had in your body, we, 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 be, all of a sudden we become where we have a pattern of leaving our body because it's our and we don't want to identify how it feels because we're trying not to feel it because we're trying to move through life. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we're here to, to really, because the whole time our, our body is our biggest messenger and it's literally trying to get you a message. And so it gets more painful. It gets more cramps. It gets harder because it's like, listen to me. And we're just like, oh my God, I just got to keep going. I can't pay attention. It's like a little kid just trying to be heard. It's just asking for you to hear, identify, and feel. And so say all my feelings are okay. All my feelings are okay. Say that again. All my feelings are okay. When you were growing up, were you taught how to feel? I mean, were you, did you express your feelings easily in no. your home? No. So very few of us were. I mean, you know, one of the things I said, that my mom would say to me when I came home, she'd say, how was your day? I'd say, it was good. She'd go, okay. And she'd watch me for a little while and then she'd go, what's wrong? <laughs> I'd be like, nothing, dude, back up. Like, and, and here we were, but she didn't ever say, how do you feel? How are you feeling? So even just that much is a dosage of how you feel. But those are the way we do things. How you done? How's your day? Good. I mean, it was just like a program. It ran through, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm good. And so we just don't learn. People don't commonly learn in their home to speak about how they feel. So now we have all these things and it's time to come back in. So I give myself permission to feel. I give myself permission to feel. Say that again. I give myself permission to feel. Say it again. I give myself permission to feel. There was breath. And what it and what do you feel right now? I'm, I have my left hand pushing down on my stomach because it hurts that much. Okay, so it's coming up right now. Awesome. And so it and it hurts so much. What is your first memory of feeling that hurts so much? Sadness. When's your first time remembering that? I have no idea. Just, just this is my first memory. Awesome. So, um, and just say, I choose to remember. I choose to remember. I think it was in utero. My, my, my dad took off with my older brother when my mother was pregnant with me at six months. So do you think that, or do you know that? I know that. There you go. Because you said, I think. And so, and it's okay. And I'm just empowering you to remember to own what you know, because you do know. And so sadness in utero because your dad ran off. Yeah, I was feeling my mother's sadness, I feel. Mm. And is, is that your mother's sadness or your sadness? Both. So I'm gonna ask you again, is it your mother's sadness or is it your sadness? mine and she had it too yes but i'm 
asking you to stay in how you feel because we all identify with other people because we can see it. This is about you. And so you could, you felt sad that your father ran off. And did you learn then that love leaves? That's unreliable. That love's unreliable. And not safe. Mm. So have you continued to have experiences of where love is unreliable? Yeah. Yes. And where it's not safe to love. Yes. Okay. And that's it right there. Not safe to love is that's you're not going to take in how you feel if it's not safe to love. Do you have a higher power, Maria? Yes. What's the name of your higher power? God, universe. God. Okay. So I remember my God security. I remember my God security. Keep your eyes open. Say it again for me. I remember my God security. Say it again. I remember my God security. And how do you feel saying that? Better. My my stuff. My my feeling has gotten. It's not as it's not as painful. Awesome. Stop cramping. Awesome. Because God security is a strong foundation. Because if you have God in you, then you're calling on that security. And when you say, I remember, this is who you were divinely meant to be. You're calling on a divine blueprint of how we were designed, we were meant to be. We just got life experiences. And yes, your life experience came early. So at the moment of creation, you instantly learn that it's it's not, that love is not safe. And so being able to remember your God security and say, my love is secure. My love is secure. Say, my love in me is fully secure. My love in me is fully secure. Say that again. My love in me is fully secure. One more time. My love in me is fully secure. Sorry, I was just looking at the thing. My love in me uh -huh. is fully secure. And that was just a... a Somebody leaving. flashed a message on my on my phone. I get it. But that's, it's, 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 this is how we'll just, it's okay. Because when it's really big for our feeling world, little things like that will come in and it's all part of the message. And just being able to remember that I am secure and say my love is secure my love is secure and the reason I said my love in me is because to bring it back home in you so how do you feel now pretty good got a, I got a weird sensation like a like a sharp cramp up my butt hole if you ah, can believe that which is very awesome. strange which which side right or left right right Right, right. It's time to move your ass. So, um, <laughs> I mean, ha have you been sitting back? I mean, have you been sitting back and drawing yourself away from love, trying to stay secure? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. And so that comes in like, boom, now it's time we make our move. Say, I willingly move forward in my love. I willingly move forward in my love. Say it again. I willingly move forward in my love. One more oh, time. It's, it's come up to my JJ now. <laughs> awesome. Moving stuff. Wow. That's, okay. And that's right into creation. That's where you came in. That's how this awesome. We got to the root. We're back to the root. That's awesome. And just being able to tell yourself, I am secure in in my feelings 
And I, I remember my God security for you. That's a big landing. I can feel that one from here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So yes, there's always a little bit more in there. How are you feeling now? Cause I'm watching your little face go. <laughs> uh, safe. You choose safe or secure? Secure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Ooh, we got some gold today. Super excited. Thank you so much for jumping in. I love it when we all jump in. I'm trying to go to the chat so I can see the chat because I've yet to be able to see that part. Let me scroll down over here. Awesome. Yes. And so Julie's like, it's, it's, it's amazing how fast everything happens. Yes, it is absolutely amazing how fast everything happens. And that's the truth of what's going on. Um, this is my link for donation. I put in here, if you choose to donate, if you're in Canada, somebody told me I can only do PayPal. I'm like, okay, here's my PayPal. If you choose to donate for today's call, there it is. I know some of you did. I'm putting it over there for you. Um, also I'm going to put my, um, here's my email address. Well, you can see my email address right there. You can use that when I have two email addresses like everyone else. So, um, here is my website. So, because I do this all the time, this is what I do. This is what I do. And now being able to put that with some fashion maneuvers, I'm going to start layering those two together. So before too long, you'll be seeing me doing just like you did with the choice and being able to add those decrees in with fashion maneuvers. If you're working on your fashion maneuvers now and you're, you're like, huh, what do I use? What do I use? What do I use? Um, you can text me and ask me for certain things and I'll share what I, what I, what I can in, in quickly. Um, but I give myself permission to let go is a very powerful one. And then even I surrender because we've held on tight to our bodies and listen, we had experiences and that's what we did to survive. But if we can stay in survival or we can enter thriving in life. And if we want to transfer from one to the other, it will require a great letting go. I share with people that letting go allows for you to have an opening to bring something in. Because you're not going to just, people often will just want to remove things from their body. Like, I just want to remove this negativity. I want to remove this anger. I want to, and, I, and my belief is let's take the energy and transform it. Let's take what you got. And you may begin with, I give myself permission to let go. That's how I began with removing my seizures is I just, on my way to MFR that weekend, I didn't know what was going to happen. I kept saying, I give myself permission to let go. I give myself permission to let go. I didn't know what I was letting go of yet, but I was going to get there. I knew something was coming big for me. And in the understanding of letting go, one of the things that I've said I found very supportive for me is I let go and I let my love in. I let go and I let my love in. It's important, y'all, that we identify things with my. One of the things I've heard a lot on Human Garage that I choose to really upgrade is the the body, the the stomach, the the hand, the knee. The this, the that. And I understand when we're teach when people are teaching groups, but what I'm hearing is I'm hearing from participants that are saying the, oh, the knee hurts. I'm like, whose knee? And it's mine, my knee. And it's just a way that we stay disconnected from our body. The is a separator. I can't say I choose the love. I'm not going to touch that. That's not going to enter my body. I take the choice. What? Where? Where are you going? And it's so we require identifying my shoulder, my stomach, my knees. We are owning what we are feeling in our body. It doesn't mean you have to hold on to it by owning it. That's the way I was raised. 
if I owned something, then I was going to be guilty. And there was all this magnitude of stuff that would happen afterwards. So ownership was something that I bailed out on real quick. But what I began to understand now is, okay, wait. So if I'll own that this is mine, then I can transform it and move. I don't require rolling in it, bathing in it, anything. I just have a deeper understanding when I'll own it. I watch my family around my house and they'll start doing stuff. And I look at them and I'm like, ooh, what's that? I'm like, oh, that's me. Hmm. Where am I doing that? Hmm. My son's sick today. I'm like, what am I sick of? I ask myself, what am I sick of? What are you sick of, Carrie? I'm like, ooh, I'm yet to know the answer to that. That's on my altar right now. That's that's how fast I put it on there because I'm not going to go, oh, he's sick. What's wrong with him? I'm like, and and yes, I mean, I hey, here's your tea. You're, anything he asks for support, I hand it to him. What I'm saying is I'm owning that that word is being used. A lot. They're talking about sick. And I'm like, what am I sick of? So I ask myself, because if he's in my awareness, part of it is alive in me. If somebody is in your awareness, part of it is alive in you. Many of you may be workers where you work on people. Uh, you may be, you may know, identify yourself as a body worker, a healer or something. And you may say, oh my gosh, I take on other people's feelings. Blah, 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 blah. I tell people all the time, that's a choice to take on other people's feelings. The fact is, is that if you identify someone else's feeling by touching them, the feeling was already alive in you. I'm going to say that again. If you identify a feeling from someone else by being in the room with them, by touching them, that feeling is already alive in you. So what does that mean? Because people will stop supporting other people because they're like, I can't take care of my inner city. I'm like, no, well, there's one choice. Or you can own that you know this. I had a girl show up for our, one of my retreats and usually when I do, because I do retreats as well, they're fabulous. And usually I work with people first. Like usually I do an eye reading for them before they come to retreat. Or we have one session before they come to retreat. Or they jump on a call for a class. Something. Nothing. This girl just showed up. She showed up. And when she got on the table, it was a 2020 special. I had, it was the first time I had seen that much rape. That much rape, that much brutality, that much abuse, that much anything. And I thought, why am I here? Why am I here? Like, I know I was put here that she chose me and my partner. I was like, she chose us. Why did she choose the two of us? It's like, what is this? And we kept looking at each other and going, There's something, we, we're here for a reason. I mean, we're here. We've got the skills. We got it. What is it though? I, have I experienced these things? No. I'm like, this hasn't happened to me. Why am I here? Because she left her body because she had so much pain. I had left my body. I knew what it was to have great stay and return to home in me. I knew what it was to return to love in me. So I was masterful at that. That's all she required. I didn't have to feel all of her pain. I didn't have to feel all of her stuff. All I did was I locked into, she's left her body, I return home in me. I am home in me. And every time I touched her, because we do body electronics, and that's my thumbs and acupressure points for people to come back in. It's a rebirth. And when I was holding those points, I was just, I stay in me. I am secure love home in me. Because that was her return. And she rose off that table with, I am secure home, love in me. I am secure love home in me. I am secure home in me. She just was like this magnitude of swirling love and home and just, and her eyes were different and everything was different. That's what we do if we work with people is we become aware of where the feeling is acting in us and what it is. And then we stay in the return. But we can stay in our bodies and work with people. That's new for some people. Because leaving your body is draining. That's why everybody's tired and everybody goes to human garage. We've all been depleted for years from leaving our body for so long. We're like, ah, oh, somebody give me relief. 
Relief is relife, relife, returning to life where you left yourself behind. Relief. That's what we're here for. We're here for that great return. And so remembering that there's so much secure stay and that's really, most people, what I've discovered is most people really are upgrading, feeling secure, staying in love. But it's everything that's all in here. It's just like Gary says, we have everything in our body that we require. All our tools are right here. We just require owning it and using it. And this is how we do it. So if you pair that with some decrees, anything you put your hand on your trap, I mentioned this last time, if you're doing any of the uh, organ resets, you're putting one hand on your trap, <laughs> got to ask yourself what's trapped. <laughs> and um, this is a burden to blessing. Your shoulders are burdens to blessings. And you may have been trapped in believing that your body's a burden or you're carrying other people's burdens. But you're remembering your blessings. So when I put my hand on my, on my trap and then I put my hand on an organ, I remember my blessings of letting go. I remember my blessing of forgiving. I remember my blessing, but I'm owning my blessings again and again, because once again, you require an opening for blessings. You require an opening for blessings. And if you're willing to receive blessings, then more will come. If you're owning your body and its signals as blessings, you'll have a greater understanding and you'll move through it quickly. Love allows us to transform things very quickly. We stay lingering in pain. We'll be yet to experience the other side. And so we're just here to give ourselves one drop of love just takes one drop. I tell people, we go into sticky situations where people have had trauma and they don't, if you'll just love it for a moment, if you'll give it one drop of love, then you can move through it because everything does in fact happen for a reason. That we require living in the actual reason, the return instead of what happened. Awesome, Maria says, if I own it, I can transform it and move on. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go get the GABA because someone asked. If you'll pause for two seconds because I know exactly where my bottle is, I'm going to go get it. One moment, please. <laughs> So an interesting part and I'm, um, with regards to the human garage is our need to support the rest of the group, which I think for some of us may create a, a feeling of pressure at times. Say that again? So one, one feel that um, I've had as someone moving up through the human, oh yes, the natural factors, pharma GABA, okay. Know that. You Get the chewables because when you chew them, they act in 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes. Mine acts in like 10. Before bed? Oh, no, no. I take them during the day. You can take them before bed if you choose to, but I take it during the day sometimes. If I have a moment where I'm in my head, I will pair that with a decree and I will take some of these. Gemini, you... in my head most mm -hmm. of the time. <laughs> Aquarius, both houses. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I take two of them at a time. We take I take these on retreat. And when we're in the middle of coaching, sometimes we feel people feel uncomfortable. Just like when you're moving through a coaching, you're kind of like, eh, whoo, eh. And we just take two or three of them. And you can take it multiple times a day. That's the other thing I like about it. And I do I take it every day? No. But there's periods, we call this ease in a bottle. Mm. My coach owned a health food store. So this is the brand that she recommends. So um, we call it ease in a bottle because when you're in a movement, you require more support. This is something that I require more of. And I mean, this is the big jumbo bottle. I have the jumbo bottle because that's what I that's what I use. So there's that. But what I'm sorry, Julie, what were you saying? Yeah, just to speak about a little bit of a piece, part of kind of that that feeling of 
moving up or supporting the rest of the group in the human garage, which some of us are lifestyle artists and beyond. Others are just coming up through the system is um, the feel of that give back makes me pick up my phone and saying, okay, who should I be supporting in this moment? And I've had a lot of, and maybe Sandra can speak to that because she's been on the app a ton. There's like this, which I didn't have prior because I wasn't a uh, social networking kind of person. And now I feel like I just need to go and support my community, which creates another feeling of pressure on some level. So needing to play with the balance in that area. So first, first of all, the word need is a very longing word. Okay. You ever had, you ever had needy love? Anybody had needy love? Yeah. You wanted to back the up, didn't you? You're like, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. yeah, that word need is just, it's longing and nothing's going to happen. So that's, first of all, I'm going to get that word right there because we, instead of need, you either have a desire to help support people. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I will often tell, you know, hop on once or twice a day. Like I hop on in the morning and then I hop on in the evening. Or sometimes I'll, I'll pick a time where I just hop on a few times a day and give myself a certain amount of time to support. And then I put it down. I require that because I've had so much compulsion in my life. Or I will find myself going, oh, like, you know, like I can coach you here and I can get this here and I could. And then, then I'm leaving my body to coach. That's way out of line. And I, and I've caught myself and I'm like, Oh, and as soon as I do, I put my phone down right then. And I stop, I cancel. You get them. I mean, and I just like, I stay and I'll just put it down then. And then I tell myself, okay, here's what we can do. I'm going to pick it up in the morning for 30 minutes and in the evening, because anything that is important that somebody requires support, especially in this community, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. And if they truly have an opening for it, they're going to receive it in the right time. We believe we have to do it right now. We have to do it right now. We have to get, there could be somebody, there could be. And that's leaving your body. Why do you think Gary has so many people? I mean, first of all, because the whole thing's amazing. We all know that. But what I'm saying is so many people show up to support because he understands that it takes a community. He doesn't desire that anybody leave their body and return to the massive headspace that you will that you've been in in order to support somebody because that's out of alignment. So that's what I that's what I do for me that supports and I'm not as far along as you are yet. And I still in my job in coaching, I support people. And so I've I've had where even on my text on my person because my personal phone, my people will text me questions and things and when it's easy for me, I respond. But I always ask myself, why pick it up? And I'm like, okay, where am I? Am I at a football game? My son's football game? Then I'm going to put that down. I mean, because you just require pausing. That's a fact is what happens is we jump in real fast. and like, instead we stop. I slow down. And I have to ask myself, where am I? Is this taking me out or is this supportive? And one of the things I say, is this my great self or is this my small self? And then I know. And then I know. Sandra, you have a question? Um, no, I just wanted to respond um, to Julie okay. because I have felt that pressure at times, you know, going in there because there's always so much and it's increasing. And there's a lot more people asking questions. And there's there's days that I don't put anything on there. Because before I do, before I open the app and look at anything, I check in with myself. Am I, am I in a position to be able to um, effectively do this at this moment? And the last couple months, that's been less than normal. But yeah, I was feeling that overwhelmed before as well. And I, I recognize I need to do the muscle testing, like, okay, am I able to do this right now? So that's, and so here's what I'm going to tell you, um, take a step further. And instead of muscle testing, just ask yourself on the inner, like just ask for a yes or no, because I used to muscle test all the time. And I found myself doing it the other day. Cause I can do body rocks. I can do muscle. I, 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 
pendulums, but I've done all of it. But then I was like, wait a second, that's even slower than my direct response. So I'm like, that's why I asked myself, is this my great self that's going to do this? And if I hear yes, then I go. So start lining it up, getting it even closer because you, you've been able to do that now just upgrade it a little bit more. That's what I empower you to do. But the whole thing is the reason the two of you felt pressure is because both of you have overwhelmed and pressure patterns. So you're going to feed it. You're going to find something that's going to make you feel that way. So it's for you to say, no, I remember ease. Does this feel like ease to me? No. Okay. Put it down. Because for the two of you, that's the pattern from pressure to ease. So being able to ask, does this feel like ease? Does this feel easy to me? No. Okay. Boom. Put it down. It's, it's all in your pattern. It's like, I, I laugh when a micro just says, it's like you're snorting it. It's like you're so addicted to, you're so addicted to pressure. Where can I find pressure? Ooh, sign me up for the Uma garage. How far up can I get? How much pressure can I get? Ooh, 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 ooh. It, I mean, it is, it's seriously, it's a, somebody else said to me, are you snort? Somebody said to me, because I grew up with my helicopter mom. And so I was doing it to my children in a totally different way. And yet I was doing it. Somebody said, are you sniffing your children? Like, are you snorting them? I'm like, yes, I'm snorting my children. Okay, I'm going to put that down. <laughs> like, I author my own life. I stay in me. So lots of good stuff. Stacy. first time I've seen you. Good to see you. Teresa, first time I've seen you. Maria, I know, tried to connect for a while. So grateful you got on. Phyllis, I see you over and over again. Love to see your face. Um, Jodi jumped over. She's running around listening. There's your face. Hi, dear. Nice to see you. First time seeing you. Glad to see you. Irene, getting ready for work. Awesome, Irene. Thanks so much. Thanks for jumping in, guys. I'm going to follow me. Go on to Human Garage and follow. That's how you'll get the alerts of what I'm doing. I am going to do another one of these in November. And then I'll offer stuff between now and then. There's going to be more coming. I'm yet to know what it is. I'm following my signal on everything I do. I'm grateful for every one of you that you showed up today. And I'm the reason you did is because I showed up and I'm so excited about, I have so much will coming on board right now, y'all. It's massively awesome over here. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. All right. Now, is this going to, um, because you're sending this out, is it going to go yes. by email or in Human Garage? I'm going to send it out through email. Good. Okay. Because I'm going to send because, it out through email. I believe it's easier. I, I, it is, it is for me too, because I, I find I get lost in, in the Mighty the Girls stuff. Network because it's not as user friendly. Yes. So excellent. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. I don't think you have my email. I'll just put it in the chat. Uh, put it in the chat. If you signed up for class, it should have put it in there. If you RSVP'd, keep in mind that I say it. Um, I believe that it did. I choose to know. But in the past, I could click on it and get the RSVP people's information. So if you're on here and you didn't RSVP, choose to know if you can. If not, you can send me an email and um, you can send me an email because my email's over there. You'll find me. Send me a message. Thank I'll you. get this to you. You are welcome and share. That's what I say. Share, share, share. Because the more people that can understand that the how, how much power we have within us, the more we'll be able to transform and return to, to secure love home in us. Bye, guys.